Okay, it should be recording now. Awesome. Cool. It looks like uh, I just realized I think we have business starter as opposed to business standard, which is when they they allow for uh, uh, a recording. Oops. Uh, reading uh, notes. Uh, cool. Okay, so I guess we can get started. Um, just quick, um, as usual, um, please when we record it, going to be up on the YouTube. Um, standard code conduct applies from both um, CNCF, the Nails Foundation, as well as tax security, um, tax security uh, code of conduct. Um, all right, so I guess we can do some quick updates, just general things uh, we want to talk about, and then we can go ahead into um testing the current item set on the list. Uh, but maybe I also have updates. Um I I'm working with Amy to get the, the survey up. She said it'll be um, probably done by the end of the week. Um, there were some questions that apparently you can't do in SurveyMonkey. <laughs> so we had to kind of split the questions up into two different questions or, um, yeah, or, or basically, you know, just um, um, some ambiguity in, in some of the questions. But that's pretty much all about just one more issue left. And we can get that launched. Um, question on that. Um, I think it would be good if we can have someone write up kind of like a at least a small uh, small section around like um, publishing the the blog post. Uh, not blog post. Publishing the the survey. Um, we have kind of like a template. In this, let me bring it up. Um, we have a call to actions template here. Um, so, if someone would like to to draft this, um, I think that would be good. And then um, they can send it to the tax security mailing list once the survey is ready. I can take that real quick if um, nobody else wants to take it. Sounds good. I'm happy to review or anything. Okay, I will put. Um... Um, one open question I think I have uh, for some of this, which is I know one of the questions we're probably going to get is how does this differ from the Eclipse OpenSSF chain guard uh, survey. Um, I'm, and to be clear, I haven't actually seen that survey. I've been super busy. Uh, but, but I've seen that survey around supply chain security going around. Um, I know ours is more focused purely for CNCF projects, but just wanted to see if there was anything that, that folks saw that's like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is very clear how it differs, just so that you know, if anybody asks a question, we can say, yeah, yeah, no, that the, the 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 other one from from Eclipse and Chain Guard is very focused on this. We're very focused on this. I'm happy to do some research on that, but I don't know, I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, I think that would be super helpful. At least, like, if someone comes to ask us, we we have an answer to them rather than be like. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I think that'd be helpful, Marina. Thanks. Okay, so I think we should be all good on the survey. Um, I know we had one other issue um, that Marina, you were looking at around the the mapping from the white paper. Wait, what's it? The ma the mapping from the white paper to salsa. Right. Yeah, so what I kind of started doing was just expanding the scope of that a little bit. And I made the spreadsheet that looked at the white paper and salsa, but also um, kind of other tools in the space and where they all fit together, um, go together versus um, change. I posted that some, I could find a link to it, but. Um, it's in the issue? Yeah, it was kind of the direction I took there. Um, I think we could also do something that focuses just on salsa and this, but I don't know what form that would take. So um, just to <laughs> uh, throw a wrench in there. Um, so so there's actually, uh, between the controls um, working group in the CNCF, uh, salsa positioning. And a lot of folks have sort of started to, to create. Um, so I think you're the, uh, Marina, I think you're the only one who's been actually mapping the, the tools directly at this point. But a lot of other folks have been doing a lot of the sort of Hey, this um, this control from the white paper, or this control from the best practices, maps to this salsa thing, or this thing in the SSDF, or this thing in you know, um, which I think is also very uh, um, valuable. So I was just seeing if, I, and I still don't know how to best do this, given that the controls group their meeting is at the same time as the salsa positioning meeting which is looking at how do we do the interop um but just just uh, uh throwing that out there as um it sounds like a lot of folks are very interested in the work you've done uh, marina and how we can better sort of merge it into the the other work that's going on yeah happy to hear that because that was kind of what i noticed too a lot of people were looking at the like the ssdf and the standards but not a lot of people were looking at like you know the open source tools and where they fit into to all of that so i i have a thought here you know i i think we can be a bit we can make this a bit broader right so i think we have you know not only for supply chain security but we already have like a kind of corpus of of information for other security tooling as part of the um the cloud native security map um so my initial thoughts is to add a section of the cloud native security map um and then kind of like, you know, have someone go in and make that make them more usable. Uh, at least you have a landing page for for the the work that we're doing there, rather than being just another document that's floating around. Yeah. So so um, along those lines, and I know we've had this discussion a few times, is a lot of folks are really interested to see if we can leverage something like OSCAL, so that you know, like at the end of the day, the things that like the goal here that folks are interested in is having the data around some of these mappings exist as data um, that can then be put into multiple views so that, you know, somebody can just, let's say, refer to Marina's mapping and it would automatically, you know, do everything else. So if the idea here is like, oh, here's the tools and somebody else has a mapping of this requirement to this control, they could go and see, oh, this requirement maps directly to this tool as per Marina's thing. And I know that's one of the intentions of OSCAL. I just also have seen that the state of the 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 state of the tools and some of these other things are still kind of um, relatively early on uh, outside of, was it uh, IBM Trestle and a couple of other things. So I, I think, um, I know that's kind of an ongoing, um, Brendan, as just an open question is like, I know that's kind of an ongoing thing is how many, a lot of people are asking the, the thing of, hey, we don't just want another document that just kind of gets thrown in there. It's almost like we want to have something akin to a an actual data model and a database that can kind of, so that when somebody yeah. comes in, they can just point to the data. And if it changes, great, it automatically updates on their end and it's all good as opposed to, oh, we need to copy paste this across five different places. So... One thing about OSCAL is it does fall slightly short from that vision. 
So OSCAL is, you can think of it as a set of definitions that are linked. So you can create a database of uh, control of policies and, and standards and controls, et cetera, et cetera. And there is the concept of a transformer where you could have some programmatic thing that is not part of OSCAL, but integrates with it that then builds in information for you. The problem that, uh, that you described here is, uh, I believe, one about uh, how, do we, how do we map to those in a, uh, like I, I have a specific control, how do I get that automatic mapping to, to occur? So I think OSCAL can provide the foundation for that, but it's not going to do the actual, uh, the actual mapping in that sense. Like there's no logic within OSCAL that you can say, that you can branch or, or say, here's a set of controls that implement this uh, specific thing, select, select one. Uh, but but I think that the, the foundation there uh, is is there, so it could uh, something external could be that thing that does it. Well, I, I know that this is working on some of this stuff with the cybersecurity, the CSF. Um, they're having a they're trying to create some kind of model around like how do you map the policy onto different things. Um, they are not looking at mapping it. I don't believe they're looking at mapping it to directly to specific documents, but I think once they have that framework in mind, um, that ontology can be used to to kind of map onto the different document evidence from Oscar. Um I know Dave Winterman also from NIS has some updates on um, Osco that he can provide. Um, to to some of this mapping of documents, so I, I'm not sure that that's directly related to this, but um, maybe it, it'll be good if we can bring him in to to chat a bit more about that. So, so I'll come back to the the tooling stuff, right? So we have. Um, Well, I think I think that um, Marina, can you share that that document that you've been working on? Yeah, I'll I'll post it in chat in a sec. Okay. Oh, waiting on that. Any thoughts on the the memo, the White House memo? Uh, a lot of interesting stuff there. there. Um, I, I, I I do I think that there is. Uh, I do think that there's some. Um, I I agree a lot with what Dan had mentioned. He he wrote up uh, his thoughts on it. Um, Dan Lorenz. Uh, I think from my end it's there's a lot of i have a lot of worry about it being maybe too easy to just say yeah i'm doing the thing and i'm self-certifying i'm doing the thing without necessarily like you know like the, the idea here being one of the big issues with with a lot of the nist controls in the past and a lot of just generally regulatory compliance controls is somebody puts everything into a spreadsheet and says yeah here's the proof that i did it i have a bunch of screenshots i have a bunch of whatever um it seems like potentially there's a there's some areas from the memo of it being a little too easy to just say yeah i'm doing the thing without like maybe following the letter of the law without following the spirit of the law that's that's my only worry but besides that i think it's it's a good start but you know there Self-attestation is pretty common in the federal space. Um, and really what I think self-attestation does is it provides uh, board members with the actual legal risk that matches the operational risk, right? Um, so if you self-attest something and you're lying about it, right, there's an actual legal implication because the federal government hates it when you lie to them. Um, so from that standpoint, I think it's a really good thing. 
I, I think, you know, third party assessment, right? If you if you look on what's going on with like CMMC, FedRAMP and stuff, there's already a lot of regulatory burden on small companies. Um, and I, I don't know, my every you're a part of a small company, right? If you have to go, uh, you know, do two, three work weeks worth of work, um, especially even more if it's out of your area of, of expertise, uh, in order to become compliant, you may not actually really care about that customer anymore, right? Uh, and you might kill all your margin there. So it's a fine balance between um, the government wanting to encourage innovation and be able to consume that innovation, uh, with also um, ensuring that you know there is some sort of standard set and a legal framework to enforce that standard. Um, I think once you which you look at the document too, uh, there's some language in there that gives uh, program managers a lot of flexibility in their requirements for the vendors, whether that be you know certified evidence or or more detailed or like a third party assessment. Yeah, I yeah, I, I think they, they do have one part on like the by the assessments, but it's like kind of optional. Um, yeah, I, I guess, and, and so to be clear, I, I completely agree with you, Cole. There, I think the thing is maybe what I would love to see, and this is maybe even something like you know OSCAL or related, is like better ways to do that self assessment. Or do that, you know, um, self-assertion that like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm compliant. Like ways that that you know, because I know one of the big things from from the other end has been there's like twelve different ways to sort of provide proof or whatever, and that you can sort of say like, if somebody were to come in and, and audit and say, hey, let's let's actually take a look, are you doing the right things? Um, I know one of the big things like, is there ways for us to kind of standardize around some of that? Um, which I know also has different burdens on different people because everybody does stuff a little differently. But I know it's like, like, because when I look at also some of the stuff, uh, I see people talking about like SOC compliance and, and some of the other ones is um, there's lots of different ways of describing all of that same data. <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, right now, what the process looks like in the modern if it's modern software factories that the DOD and other organizations are running is that it's the actual pipeline that gets audited uh, for compliance, not the artifacts that come out of that pipeline. So uh, there's like a point in time audit. OK, yeah, you're doing all your checks. Here's your evidence that you produce in each one of these steps. So uh, we're assuming that you're not going to disable any steps of the pipelines when you release this artifact. Um, so we're going to give you a stamp of approval that anything that comes out of this pipeline uh, is approved at the different impact levels or uh, um, you know different security levels. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. But the, yeah, and then the problem with that is is that gets really, really, really expensive. You know, think about if you got to audit you know a thousand different pipelines, that takes a lot of expertise. Um, that just really isn't available right now in the industry to, to scale to that big. All the people that are know how to audit the pipelines are, are generally building pipelines right now. So one other thing as well, just to add some context on standardization at the federal government level, um, I explicitly asked about this and one of the things that they have to abide by at this point is uh, that they don't have a uh, a kingmaker policy. So uh, even I don't know if the, in the future if they could set something, but today and either I don't today there's no path towards saying like this is the one true format and this is the one true area that everyone has to has to conform to. So uh, this is something that is going to have to play out through uh, through uh, interactions within within the marketplace. All right, good discussion. Um, let's let's get back to Marina's talk. Uh, let me share my screen so that we can all see it. Um,
Okay, can everyone see the dock? Yeah, it's just kind of small. Okay, hold on. Uh, of this. Oh no. Okay. Oh, uh, let me let me try this. Is this better? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Can make it a little bit more than. Okay. Um, Marina, do you want to just talk through this and then we can have a discussion around it? Yeah, so basically what this is, is on the left, there is um, all of the requirements from the white paper. Um, that's the, you know, the section, just so you can find it, and then the requirements. And then on the right is just kind of look at like, mostly just X's and sometimes comments about um, if and how different um, tools um, you know, correspond to those different requirements. So for salsa, I um, I mentioned the the level um, at which it corresponds because I think that was relevant. Um, I think this could definitely be expanded to include some more explanation of how and like how and when um, different things cover these requirements. But yeah, this was kind of a first first stab at that. And some of these columns are are more empty than others. Like I'm, I, I, yeah, the ones I'm more familiar with are more filled out. But yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think exactly to your point, right? I think that there needs the there had there is a level of context in addition to this that like you know, if you're looking at in total for for you know cryptographic guarantee policy adherence, like which which aspects of it is gonna help, uh how would you use it? Um and the same thing with, with the other things, especially those that like, you know, are brought like six star, where you have like the git signing, you have the artifact signing and, and so on, right? Uh, and then the the yeah, so um, and I think eventually the the broader picture of this is that okay we have the tools mapping to to the the white paper, and then the white paper maps onto the SSDF, and then you're gonna you're gonna basically help have all the information together in in one place so all linked up together. Yeah, exactly. And I think that I wasn't quite sure how to fit that context into a spreadsheet. I think where it was one word, it was easy. But like for Intoto, for example, it's like, oh, if you use this one feature or something like that, which is harder to fit into a spreadsheet. Um, yeah. So so maybe so, so this is, I guess, one of the things that that we were trying to do here with the, the security map. And I don't know whether like how well it works. So like uh, we haven't really gotten that much feedback on it yet. Um, but I think one thing that we did was like we put the projects and then we also have like examples of like how you would use these kind of toolings. Like what kind of functionality you would use uh, from the tools. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because I think it really is e more complicated than yes or no. So Yeah. Um yeah, so I, I, I want to figure out whether we can. Um, it seems like the the work that you're doing is pretty much similar to to to, um, you know what what we did with the security um, white paper, um, for for the supply chain specific stuff, right? Yeah, and that's kind of why like the work is a little bit on pause because I'm trying to figure out the best place to make sure it's like easy to find and fits in with all these other efforts. Um, I think that's kind of the next step before adding all that detail and and figuring that out, just figure out what format that should all be in. I I personally think, and I'm here some bias of this, but like, I I think the the white bay, the the security map would be a a, a good option. Um, just because you know, I, I think some of the other work that we're doing within the tag also fits into this. Um, you know, if we want to get kind of linking, I, I think the idea is like we want to eventually get to a place where all the different aspects of the work that we're doing can be linked together, like you said, um, and explored in a way that makes sense, in a way that you can you can. I, we we talked about. 
you have to do these things called um um guided guided trails which is like i'm interested in you know securing my development pipeline you know and then it will bring you through a bunch of documents that we have like these pages and more specifically add a little bit of context around like what is the path you should take and and you know what are what is the additional context why are you doing this um kind of so that people can you know figure out what is important to them and have a guided sense of what to do rather than be presented with a whole chunk of things and be like yeah do everything and then folks usually don't have a good idea on where to start yeah, I think that makes sense to me. Um, I can look through the, um, you know, the code and stuff for that. See how hard it would be for me to just add stuff to that. Yeah. So I, I, I can just do a quick one since I'm I'm familiar with that. Um, so it's in this sense. Okay. So maybe let me um, explain where it sits first. Um, so if you go to white paper. CNS map. There's a readme to talk about like what the, the mapping is, blah, blah, blah. Um, but essentially, all the codes in this branch, the CNS map branch. And really, there are two main things. One, there's this index file that just lists everything in the left column. And then, other than that, it just points to like, you know, development, uh, let's say the one you're looking at, image scanning. All we have to do is just search for image scanning.md here and the content. It's all in, in Markdown here. Yeah. Um, okay, seems pretty easy. Yeah, and like for for now, like what we've done is is we've like copied over uh we copied over all the the text from the the white paper. Um we we don't have the the capabilities to import it yet, but I think eventually you know once we uh once we build this up a little bit more uh we can we can get someone to to help build automation so that you know you retrieve this information from here we retrieve this mapping from the controls and then just have everything on the page. Cool. Um. So I guess going going back to this document, uh, any any other thoughts and and comments on on you know the the tooling, the the mapping, um, just in general. Yeah, yeah, I shared a document. We've we've done a mapping with uh, the open source that we're we're doing. I mean, it pretty much aligns with the Intoto stuff. But feel free to review that. Um, there's probably there's some stuff there in there that we haven't really released yet, as far as our open source. Um, but yeah, most yeah. of it will be uh, be open. I think there's one blog. also on the South Sub blog as well, just so that. Of all the the different sources of mapping, so you can cross verify everything. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, those yeah, documents are really, really important to those customers that care about compliance, right? So if they can find those mappings and find the set of tools they need. Yeah, and and on on this also this mapping side, uh, we're looking to uh, uh, for the tooling mapping. I know one of the things. Uh, we originally had something, but somebody got pulled away. Um, they were supposed to make a, a another spreadsheet of like sort of salsa requirements and then the tools that implement the salsa requirements. I'm gonna put all this mapping stuff in here. Okay. Um sounds good. Um 
any other comments around around you know kind of this uh, just like specific to 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 this spreadsheet that Marina is putting together. Besides, maybe Fresca is spelled wrong, right? Oh, oops. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah, I guess my, my nits would be like, um, I think like Tecton would be a good good thing to add here as well. Tecton, Argo, probably. Um, yeah, we I think... just have letters for everything else. It's definitely incomplete. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, um, you're exactly welcome. And especially if someone knows a tool really well and wants to help fill it out. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, so John, um, the lead on the, the control side, has been, uh, there's some folks who have been doing some of this stuff. Uh, they've been pulled into a million other things, so I know that they they also have some ideas here on on what that could look like. Okay, yeah, yeah. Any feedback? Any any contributions? Welcome. <laughs> this is odd. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's um. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure this. <laughs> Zooms down, Google Docs is having issues. Oh, oh no. no, the internet. <laughs> it's probably cloud there right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Supply chain attacked or something. I don't know. <laughs> cool. Um so I think that's that's that sounds good. Uh, Marina, could you I think um um uh, could you come up maybe with a shot? Um, like issue proposal, or at least like update the the issue to kind of um, to mention like the the work that you're thinking about, and then how you think it's gonna um, basically apply to the bigger picture of what the tag is doing, like mapping to the controls, mapping at this. Because I, I I think you have that in your mind. I think it'd be good to kind of write that down and then share with other people what the vision yeah. of that is. Yeah. Just post it in the issue for the salsa thing, or make a different one. Uh, if you think the the yeah, um, the scope is broader, then I would say you can create a new one and close the issue. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 Or you can create like a meta issue if you wanna create one for like the broader scope and then have a have a linked issue to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I guess I'll link them for now. Yeah, because that's really done. Awesome. Um, I think we had one more thing that we were working on, which was the work from 3M. Um, oh, right, right. Oh, I can't remember that. I think his GitHub name was CZ something. Uh, yeah. I can also add because I know that the three M folks. I think they did that in conjunction with Stelligent. I think I think that was the yeah. Okay, I found yeah, the yeah. issue. I found the issue. It's uh, yeah. nine five six. Um. All right. Uh, looking at the updates here. Okay, John said this was contributed under CC license and cloud native catalog. Um, oh, beautiful, it's done. Okay, cool. So we can close this issue. Okay, so this is available now. Um, why is this under a different repository? Oh wait, no, this is not done. Um, 
So it's this is controls catalog. Um. Okay, I think we still need to link from it from from our repo. Share my screen so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, so, this is the repo that is on. It's in here, but it's not the tech security repo. I'm so confused. Is this will it work on tech or? Okay. Okay, it's interesting. Um, I have to check with John why this looks like. The CNCF work, but it's not under CN the tax security um, stuff. I'll I'll check with John on this, and then we'll look through that. Um, cool, Marina. Since your name is name is on the ticket, I'll I'll add you to that composition as well. Okay. Cool. All right. Any any other things we wanna bring bring up today? Um, main things uh, from my end. So Salsa one point still being pushed along. Uh, there's some interesting work from the tooling side that we're still trying to kind of get across, and we're we're you know, and this is for folks who are potentially have um, tools that are related to Salsa or, or leveraging Salsa. You know, we have every Friday Salsa tooling meetings. Um, interested in some of that sort of stuff. Uh, actually, um, along those same lines, one of the things that we're trying to figure out a better way of doing is in the supply chain security space is uh, making at least some level of meetings more convenient for Europe and Asia. because. Uh, um, some of the, uh, uh, was it, 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 it like we, we actually have, um, I think some folks from Samsung who are contributing some tools for Salsa, um, but <laughs> they actually can't attend any of the meetings because they're all working out of Korea. Um, and so uh, that's kind of uh, complicates things. Um, uh, and so, yeah, there's some stuff on that end. Um, the Salsa uh, specification is slowly but surely probably going to be 1.0 soon. We'll see exactly when that might be, but probably in the next couple of months. Um, along with that, I think we're also looking at the same sort of uh, things that, um, you know, Cole was bringing up with the SSDF thing, right, which is we want to have some sort of conformance program and even like a, a self, if you have a self attestation or a self assertion that you are following, um, uh, you know, uh, Salsa, we want, the, there is a, there's some folks who are talking through um, Salsa, uh, talking through like what from the Linux foundation end, do we want to see from somebody who let's say says, hey, um, I am salsa level whatever, right? Uh, we we want folks to say, yeah, you can say you're salsa level whatever, but here's the sorts of things that we want you to sort of at least make a claim against, so that because uh, we one of the things we don't want to have happen is we don't want to have random people, for example, be using the salsa badge and just saying, yeah, I'm salsa four without 
making any claim that they are actually salsa for and and providing at least some sort of documentation that you know once again somebody can go back and say hey you said you were salsa for right you were publicly claiming like a company publicly claiming you were salsa for and then when it came down to it it turned out you were not in any way salsa for um and you know you were misusing uh like linux foundation brand uh you know and 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 trademarks right like we what was there's some stuff about on that end about like um stuff like legal liability and whatever because we don't you know we don't want to just have any random person say hey i'm salsa for um we want folks to to say no i'm salsa for because of these reasons and if it turns out they're audited and it, they were lying great people who were using them can go back and and have uh there's repercussions for that um that that's one of the things that that's also being discussed uh Actually, um, I believe uh, originally Kim from um, ChainGuard was supposed to give a uh, a presentation on some of the conformance um, discussions that we've all been having with the Linux Foundation, but she's got pulled into something else, so won't be having that. But that should be probably next meeting then. But actually, that's another open question for sort of um, Brendan is is when folks are starting to like say hey we're compliant with the best practices coming out of um, the best practices guide or we're compliant with the reference architecture or whatever um i know that people are asking for there's there's two things one is hey how do i make this claim and at least provide you know some sort of documentation to say yes we are doing this thing and so if somebody did come and audit and said hey no you're not doing that thing uh you know th there could be you know how can they do that in a in a good way and then separately i know some folks are asking for how can like is there plans for like the cncf to do some sort of conformance program so that a third party audit firm or whatever can say yes you are following the best practices white paper and you're following this this and this um and you know, saying that yes, this third-party audit firm that the you know that is trusted by third parties or whatever uh, is 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 able to do that. Yeah, I I I I think that the two parts of this, right? One other thing is like um, I think we we have to be clear of what like what's a framework and what's compliance. Because I think like all the white papers and everything that we publish right now are just like frameworks to think about the compliance. Even like SSDF itself is a framework, right? I think eventually there'll be some compliance requirements and all those like, um, how do I know that your meeting this will fall on um, basically whoever's doing the audits and like, you know, you get different agencies that have different mindsets on, uh, uh, like different audit other companies that have different ideas around some of the controls. And you know, eventually, uh, I mean, I think this is this is a struggle even with cloud native security audits, right? It's like we get a lot of feedback um, from some people that you know my auditors don't know how to audit cloud native security so they're, they're you know asking for like parameter controls and stuff like that even though you're using like zero trust um so it's difficult to explain to them so so i think one part of that is like i i don't know how much we can do in terms of like compliance and conformance because you know um eventually it boils down to whoever is enforcing the compliance um so whether it's like government or whether it's the, the healthcare industry uh you know it, it it falls onto those those bodies so like as much as we can as like an open source foundation we can say like okay yeah here are some guidelines and the, the project kind of follows them we, we can help provide a pathway to help projects and and organizations meet the compliance but i'm not sure how much we can do in terms of like um having something be you know certified um we can definitely make it easier in in the case of, okay yeah then other companies um agree that this certification is is kind of a good mapping 
they won't obviously publicly go out and say the rubber stamp that like, oh, if your results are fall, then you meet this thing, right? It's like kind of they will still evaluate it, but it will help them. Um, it will make it easier for them to to evaluate it. Um, yeah, so at, at least my point of view of it is like we can help make the, the journey easier. I'm not sure how much we have in our capacity to kind of influence the compliance related things. If, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, 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 I get that. I think that there's just, so there's, there's some stuff around, I think like, so, so one of the things that, that, you know, if I put on my, you know, if I go back to when I was working at the banks and, you know, doing a lot of stuff here, and I'm sure Cole has similar experiences doing a lot of stuff with, with, you know, government contracting is like at the end of the day, you know, a lot of a lot folks of are going to be asking those very silly questions, right? They're going to be saying like, okay, great. You're doing zero trust, blah, 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 blah. Cool. Where is the proof of the network control? And you're like, no, no, like the zero trust thing means there, there isn't a network firewall control anymore. And you're like, no, no, but, but, but how does that, you know, it's, I think along those lines is even sort of, you know, bringing like figuring out a Sorry, way please. to sort of describe that in a way that's like, Hey, this is what it used to be. And this is what it looked like. And now this is what it is. And then that sort of like allows people to go and say, Oh, okay. So I no longer looking at, and this, to be clear, this is a real thing that has happened is like, I'm no longer looking at a screenshot of the, the web API for the, the firewall with like, yes, you've blocked this port, right? I'm now looking for this, right? That's, you know, I think that also helps provide information to the folks who are like the regulatory bodies or, or whoever these compliance folks are to help inform them that, yes, yesterday I was looking, you know, and to be clear, I don't want to, you know, hate on compliance people, but a lot of them are just like, hey, I'm not, they're not super technical. They're being asked to just sort of say, hey, look for these things. And now they need to be asked, no, now you're looking for these things. Yeah, I think I think we have a good chance to shape the narrative around the SSDF, right? Uh, cargo culting. If I go to a customer and they're like, and I talk about SSDF, they're like, well, I don't even know where to start with this. So they're like, we want you just to tell us what to do, right? Um, and I think that's going to be the case for quite a while until there's enough information out there for these um, for the people to go out and find the information themselves. But I mean, who's going to create that information? You know, it's the people sitting in this meeting. And, you know the other people that you know we we, we talk to on a daily basis. Um, so I think as long as the writing that that we put out there, the blog articles, the the information says, hey, this is more going to be an automated process for these controls. I think you know that carries a lot of weight and, and can help change some of the industry and how they look at these things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put something out there as well. Uh, we we have talked to CSA on exploring some of these things. I think there will be an opportunity to potentially collaborate if we see that there is a a guidance document that we can co-author together. And CSA is pretty much very into the audit space, so I think I think their name there uh, and their collaboration there is, is going to help with the influence. Yeah, I agree. I'll uh, I, I'll help out wherever I can. Um, just want to make sure that I have uh, you know I'm not the only one, right? I don't want my bias coming through in any blog articles or or, or I don't want anything to be self serving, right? Um, so if uh, if we want to write some stuff, yeah, let's do it. So I think for that we we have to kind of have a good scoping around that. I I feel like it's. You know, I, I I don't think we can achieve the entire SSDF within like a, a single document. Uh, at least not not in a productive way where we actually get something done. <laughs> um, so I have this issue open. Um, this is around just like auditing cloud native security, but I think we can probably chime in a little bit on you know what specifically are we seeing? Like we talk about the zero trust versus that parameter security uh, discussion, but also from from the aspect of 
supply chain part or something. So maybe we can just work on a document to be like, look, five years or 10 years have passed within the industry. Here are some things that you have to take note of, right? We, we maybe we look through the entire um, um, document and we identify, you know, here are all the things that at least like in the long term, here are all the different things that are, have changed. And let's start with the first five out of this entire list and then make a blog post on that. And yeah. I, I don't have that much background in the modern auditing space, so I'm, I'm you know, <laughs> open to all the information possible. Well, I think it's, it's there's a handful of things, like there's certain uh, legacy things that are still very much uh, spreadsheets, screenshots, that kind of a thing. They are, people are telling them like, hey, look, the world is shifting to more of this the proof is coming from API calls and yada yada and stuff like attest you know attestations where it's cryptographically signed. But you know, I'm sure uh, uh, Cole's probably dealt with this. Um, you know, I, I know Frederick works in a in a um, in a highly regulated industry as well, and I know I've dealt with this where like the way sometimes you prove compliance is somebody's looking over your shoulder as you show them like a dashboard that's green or whatever and they go okay you know um but which obviously is is it's like people can fake that people can do you know yada yeah, yada um but i think as time goes on the things that folks are are starting to kind of really focus on is the idea of continuous compliance or uh, continuous validation is another term for for this sort of thing of like continuously saying like, could you make it essentially the same way we have observability, monitoring and metrics, et cetera. Like, could you make it a health check? And that health check is ostensibly the compliance check, right? You know, yes, you have a monitoring thing that says, great, I have a system that should not have access to this other system, keep checking. Can I access it? Can I access it? Can I access it? No. Cool. That's the proof that you, you know, the the net the the zero trust control is working because it's blocking it in the right way. Um, I think those sorts of things are are things that that folks are starting to do. The problem is it's an education problem, it's a people problem, it's a process problem. And then finally, it's the tools, right? The tools need to be updated, but without some of the other buy-in from the the these other groups, it's going to be really, really, really hard. Yeah, it's um, in a previous uh, workplace, it was screenshots. So yeah, even worse. You don't like the good old days of Windows screenshots? Huh? <laughs> I love them. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, de de definitely agree. I, I think um, people are dropping off already. But, yeah, I, um, I gotta run this. So yeah, 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 I'm gonna try and hopefully Zoom is back up so I can join the salsa meeting. <laughs> Take care. Do you, you want to finish your comment, Frederick? Still gonna be recorded. Um, yeah, this is still recorded. So if you want to give me a call, uh, do, you, uh, do you have my number? No, I have I have another meeting after this as well. I'll think on Slack. I know. Take it. All right. See you. Bye. Take care.